Boom. Let us begin live on Twitch. David Molyneux. How are Eric you? Cantoni. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? I'm good, dude. Are you? What's happening? I'm all right. You know, the, the weather out here or in Canada right now, Toronto, if it's if this is what it's like in England, it's just foggy and rainy and just damp all the time. Is that what you guys got all the time? That's what you hear. We got the frosts. Man, I feel like we're living in Gotham here. Uh -huh. Have we, we've, we've barely seen the sun, I think, two days in a month. Really? It's so weird. Yeah, it's, 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 gets, it's starting to get to everybody. Oh, that's odd. Does it look like a 90s computer game? You know, do you remember the Spider-Man Spider computer game from the 90s? Did you ever play that? Yeah, the ones that were on the, like, consoles. Yeah, not on yeah. Okay. And then you'd swing around, but you couldn't see yeah. very far because the graphics no. couldn't take it. Yeah, that's and what it's like. When it's really like. foggy, it reminds me of that. Oh, man. It's been steady for a couple of weeks. So these are good breaks when you kind of just get home and, and chat with a pal and do some, you know, exciting what's coming out in the next month that we can buy because man this winter has been it's been groggy it hasn't even been super cold and snowy in canada it's just been like you know grab a blanket and have a cup of tea not that winter isn't like that but man it's just been sad sad weather oh that's no good yeah let's get some no, cheering up in then with some that's it we got to get happy needless purchases absolutely how do you feel being on Twitch live? I mean, um, we we podcasted for a while together, so this isn't like yeah difficult to do. But how does it feel being live? Um, I'm touching cloth. <laughs> how about okay. you? It's weird. It's it not that it's that weird because me and you have done the Instagram thing. You've done that before. Yeah, but yeah, yeah that's true. I've never had anything on on YouTube permanently, no. not yet. Well, it's a good little experiment. We, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But um, if yeah. anyone actually watches this or is watching already right now, then thanks very much. Um, yeah, we're uh, doing a little experiment, seeing what happens. And but normally this is literally this, we see each other and we'll just go look, look at this, look at the thing I got, and whatever, and, and no one else can see it. So right, yeah, we're just adding another dimension. That's it, making the plate fuller for you to choose how you want to listen to the podcast if you feel like looking at us if you don't i don't blame you turn it off. Just turn it <laughs> but off. listen to the show like you gotta you gotta tune in one way or the other tune into us it'll yeah. be fun and we'll make you spend money or or motivate you to spend money that you don't need to <laughs> but it keeps the market alive it does it keeps right? the dream and the and the comic goodness exactly in the stores um, so do you oh go ahead no you go Please. for it go for it dude I was just going to say, we're doing our coming, our incoming comics collected edition for February. Yep. We've, was it hard for you to find stuff that was the stuff, the kind of stuff that we buy? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing um, with this month, it, well, next month, I guess it is, it is, um, is that it, it seems like there's not a lot of new beginnings for people um, yeah. or standalone stuff. So we generally tend to recommend first volumes or standalone volumes when we do these, with the odd exception. Um, there's not a lot there. Well, there is a lot, but some of it I just wouldn't recommend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I, I feel sometimes the month can be full with image and then other month is kind of sparse. It feels like, yeah. And then one month, every omnibus you can think of is coming out from Marvel. Like January they've... was 10. That's crazy. It's too much. Yeah. That's a lot. You know, when people say they're killing it, they are killing it. This is, we're in danger of the 90s coming back. Do you think so? Yeah, I think everyone talks about all the pouches and the, and the boobs and the guns in the 90s. But the real thing was when they just broke it by just only just bringing out too much product. That's what I think it is. I think, yeah, I think if there's just too much on the shelf, something's going to suffer. Shelf's as opposed to, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think you're an overflooded market. I mean, I don't know. I'm not an economist or I don't understand how it works in comic books, but you can't, there's only so much you can keep up, keep up with as a buying customer. And these books aren't getting more affordable or, or, and I feel too, there's some sort of, uh, there's like that moment when they stopped all being under diamond 
where you really started to feel a, a little bit of a difference in just going to the comic book shop and having your regular, you knew what was coming all the time. Yeah. Whereas now like, no, this gets released on this day. And then these come in on this day. Like it's not the same experience. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know. It's well, I don't really do the comic shop anymore because it's more of a pre-orders and wait. Oh, yeah. It's at my house. Yeah. The comic pixies have arrived. <laughs> the comic pixies. Yeah. It's true. So were you able to fill out your your, your five? I but... have five. I've got five. I've got some backups in case you steal all of them. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how, how so I think there's one for sure that's going to be similar on our list. One, I, and I think we probably both pre-ordered it. Uh, but other than that, I'm interested in what our list look like because you tend to be a little bit more diverse and like, you know, here's something from Top Shelf and here's something from Arkea and Dark Horse. <laughs> Dark Horse, who are they? What do, what do they do, comics? Dark Horse Dave. <laughs> <laughs> DH is fine. Oh, yeah, that was a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so is your is your list diversified? Because I can't really say mine is too diversified. There's a bit of a mix. Yeah, there's a bit okay. of a mix. There's, okay. Yeah, yeah. There's, four, there's four companies. Okay. Are you mostly so we'll the probably... big two? <laughs> okay. Are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I get yeah. what you mean. All right, who goes first? Flip a coin? Flip a coin. Let's do it two-face style. Why suggest something if you don't have the coin? I don't know, because I'm an asshole. <laughs> That's the only reason why. I just realized, who who keeps spare change on them? I'm going to flip a Nintendo 3DS. <laughs> no, don't do that. I was like, no! Um, let's not flip a coin and just do it. You go first. Okay, okay. We'll go first, because February is the month I was born in. Oh. There you go. Happy birthday for your birthday. Thank you. So for my birthday, these are the books I'm going to have to buy for myself. <laughs> these are on your wish list. Yeah, right. Uh, okay. This is one that I didn't realize was coming out, but it just made it in under the wire. And it's fitting because in our next book of the month clubs that me and Adam Chapman have talked about, uh, doing next, we're going to get into the Steve Englehart and Marshall Rogers run of Silver Surfer. And I had the first two volumes uh, of Epic Collections that collect that run have been released. But now the, the next volume that completes it, um, Silver Surfer Return of Thanos. That's going to be released in Epic Collection, which is collected in many different formats. Um, omnibus and uh, different trades and whatnot. But this is going to be a nice little filler that completes so far... The beginning of i think it's 87 is that when it came out uh the 90, silver surfer um, 1990. is that when Mar the engelhard and, oh, and they, oh sorry when the run when that run started it was nine yeah yeah 788 something like that right yeah. so all of those have been now it's 87. yeah i think it's 87. so up until i think the when ron mars takes over all of those issues are now collected in nice big Ooh. chunk chunks to read so this is a nice it's it's a volume four i think of the epics something like that oh, for Silver be, yeah because they've got it, the kirby stuff but not this it's liam Buscema. it wasn't kirby was it yeah liam Buscema. but that's never been put it's only been in an omnibus so it's a very weird setup that they've done with these yeah epics they don't really do in order but i think they've obviously worked out someone's painstakingly worked out what order every single thing is going to come out in that must be an absolute ball like i know uh shout out to the marvel epic collection podcast i don't know if you ever listened to it um curtis is his name he's uh, like oh, the official yes. model for yeah, he is for epic collection so good on him because he's he's the one who kind of always lets you know like these are coming out which is kind of cool that someone specialized in such a niche of collecting but very niche yeah but yeah but uh this epic collection is going to make it to my shelf I'm, uh, I think it's, I have them collected in an Omni, but the return of Thanos is a big story that leads into the infinity gauntlet that, you know, as far as comic book culture goes and, and like the mythology of it all, it's a major turning point in like comic book history. It's key. And, and the thing it's is, very, it's massively key, isn't it? And it's like the key to the city, to the cosmic city. It's basically like, so initially it was Englehart was on it until around about number three. 29 30 31 maybe something like that yeah some weird little fillers um 
and sorry, I think I'm unprofessional. Um, <laughs> there were some weird little fillers with like the, that space pirate guy whose name I can't, the Flying Dutchman or something. Um, and then oh, they did the acts of idiocy issue with the Impossible Man, which was by Engelhart. So that was okay. a kind of a joke tie into Acts of Vengeance or an antithesis to Acts of Vengeance. And then Jim Starlin jumped on and it was Thanos. And it was just suddenly epic. Yeah. And you knew it was going to be a big epic coming, though I didn't realize how big it was going to be because like, I was buying these issues when they came out at the time. Um, they were 50p an issue <laughs> back in those days. The good old days. The good old days. Yeah. Because it was just a five issue story. And then it clearly wasn't going to stop it being a five issue story because then you had the Thanos quest and eventually, you know, it came back to the Silver Surfer and it was the Infinity Gauntlet and the rest is history. Right. I mean, a lot of people who've watched the, the movie universe wouldn't realize how integral, like the real integral pieces to the Infinity Gauntlet were not in any of the movies, unfortunately. And I feel like trying to recreate that is just i don't know how they would do it but i i you got i feel like you got one shot and if you want to see how the story really panned out and how why it was why it became sort of such mythological proportions this is where you could start yeah it's a great uh, starting that is the thing so i think a lot of people would think they have to jump straight onto um infinity gauntlet but it begins at silver yeah. surfer what was it 34 Something like that, Something yeah. Like that. Thirty-four to thirty-eight, somewhere around there. Yeah, and people don't. A lot of people don't know. So there's quite a fair run before yeah. it hits um, Infinity Gauntlet number one. Yeah, so this will make the shelf. But I think if you're getting invested or have been invested in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and you really like the, the where these stories come from, and and as far as our the the Omniverse Comics Guide goes, you can add this to the reading order. You can find how all of these things work together. It's coming. I haven't moved it over yet, but it's coming. <laughs> well, I mean, it will be it, coming. It, it will be there, right? It will definitely be there. So, I mean, it currently exists on the old site. I'm not even going to mention it um, for the minute. But, yes, it's all going to come over. Um, and I aim to do a few more reading orders and stuff as well so people can see how characters flow through. Um, but yeah. I do want to focus on some of the cosmic stuff. The cosmic stuff is incredibly popular. You know, yeah. there are key moments in that history, one of them particularly being the early 90s with the Infinity Trilogy. Yeah. And the next is, or either or, which is the most important, was the Annihilation stuff up to Thanos Imperative. Yeah. Um, it's all Thanos stuff. Everyone loves that guy. With his little bike park in chin business. <laughs> yeah. Park your bike it's here. A- I, I I was once told like the Infinity Gauntlet wasn't as good as like ah it's okay. And Who said that? I bought uh, it was just someone it was a comic shop, uh, not a patron. I was the patron. Someone who just worked there behind yeah. the desk, and I kind of let that influence me for a bit to be like ah, I can ignore it. And the more I read it, the more I like this is this is great. But I the subsequent readings, it, it's more fun. Yeah, that's good though in a way because it didn't set. It. I bet a lot of people. Are- are picking up going this must be the greatest thing there is and it gets voted in the top top three i think yeah marvel events of all time and it is sure. it is great like because it, it it twists and turns a lot it's a it's a fun read and you don't necessarily need to read it as a crossover you can read it without all the tie-ins you can just read the six issue miniseries yeah i would say though thanos quest oh, with, yeah that's the thing it's silver yeah. surfer and thanos yeah. quest and then the six issue miniseries, and you, yeah, you saw it. Yeah. So that's my first pick. Nice Was pick. That- I totally overlooked it somehow. It mustn't have come up when, when I did the search, which is rude. <laughs> um, but yeah. No, it's, it wasn't on my list. So that's a really good call, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to cheat on my first one because the, cheat away. the book that I've chosen. I'm going to move it up to here to you know the first mention. It was due, I think, to come out in February, but they've kind of moved it back to to January. So I think it, it's either already out or it's close to being out. But it's fine. I would have mentioned it last month if I'd known. So mentioning it now. Um, it's a bit of an odd one. It's from Oni Press. Oh, indie boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I actually secretly hate it, but I'm trying to sound cool. Um, I got it. Never going to happen. Um, it's <laughs> called Letter 44. Um, it's the compendium of Letter 44. So, I mean, we can do this as a visual thing. Check this out. Can't find my copies. <laughs> That's Charles Sewell, right? Charles Sewell. Yeah. So it was released as a series of paperbacks. There's a hard, hardback trilogy. These books are huge. But um, I kind of, I got it thinking like, I like some of his stuff, you know, that I've read in the past. Good fun stuff. It's a science fiction thing basically about, um, apparently, I don't know if it's actually true if they do this, but apparently when the president takes, a new president takes over the White House, they receive a letter from the previous president. So mm. the, the, the 44th president leaves a letter for the incoming 45th um, and divulges something that was happening on his term as president that basically aliens exist they know they're coming to earth they don't know what their intentions are they've been working on dealing with it for some time and then he has to come in and decide if he's going to do it the same way if there's time to do it differently so it's all like against the clock and it delves into like the president his family all the relationships with these people the um, the crew that go into space and their relationships with each other it's very very character driven stuff and again it's one of those one of those books that just throws you for a loop everything you think you know is coming forget it oh. so it's good and it's this is a compendium so it's all all of those books now i can't remember how many issues there are um but it's basically oh, the entire series it's about 800 pages i think in nice. one book so it's a nice chunky compendium um and it's a great series. I did. I think there were a couple of volumes of it that I gave five stars on Instagram when I reviewed them. Not the okay. whole run. So there's some real highlights in there, but for the most part, it was like top notch, you know? Um, it's yeah, it's a great book. Someone did message me back and go, it wasn't that good. <laughs> like, well, that's cause it, that's what opinion is, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's, I'm not saying by law, this is the, the number four book I've ever like four star book I've ever read. Like it's ridiculous. It's my take on it. Well, I loved it. I was completely hey, caught Charles off guard Sewell, by it. Charles Sewell has a good track record of things that he's written that hold up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've, I've enjoyed quite a few things that he's done in both companies that were kind of hard to pull off. I remember meeting him and just, he was still rather new yeah. to comics. Like he was still really making a name for himself. And he was working on Superman Wonder Woman at the time. Oh, he did, like, the yeah. First... I like that series. I did, too. I did, too. And I thought, like, you know what? That's that's a tough title to pull off because I don't know how much people were appreciative of that sort of relationship because it was very different from what everyone had been accustomed to for forever. Yeah. Right? And uh, I remember reading those first 12 issues or so and, and really feel, enjoying it. Yeah. And I told him. Like, hey, you did a really good job with that book. And I, I think he was doing She-Hulk at the same time. Like think, he was, oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? That got yeah. a lot of praise as well, I remember. I, I didn't really get on with that as much. but I never um, read it, but I know that the things that I have read from him and, you know, the Swamp Thing, very, very good. She, yeah, good call, actually. That Swamp Thing very is good. amazing. His Thunderbolts run, or a particular chunk of his Thunderbolts run, is really, really good as well. So he was on it when they did the Red Thunderbolts with the Red Hulk. Deadpool, Punisher, Elektra. Um, characters with a bit of red on them. Well, they had to make Punisher's skull red, otherwise he didn't fit. Oh, boy. But yeah, no, it was, he, it was I, a good series. That was a fun little jaunt. Yeah, and, and I've always seen uh, 44, that book that you're referring to. What's it called? Letter uh, 44? Letter 44, yeah. I've always seen it on, on bookshelves, not really knowing enough about it to dive in. Yeah. So I'm that you you know the the review you give it is promising. I'll, I'll give it a run, especially a compendium. I'm a kind that's of the thing. It's a compendium. It's, they're well priced compendiums are you know it's it's a standard size uh, paperback, but super chunky. So you get the whole run for a decent price. You know, shop around. Yeah, <laughs> you should get it for a good no. price. Compendiums are definitely a good jumping in point for wanting to love compendiums for... here. Yes, we do. Uh, okay, just blowing some dust. Can I next? Go for it, dude. Okay. Um, I've only read half of this series. An omnibus is being released or re-released. You mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about? I know what you're going to say. Uh, 
I don't, I don't mean to take it from you. <laughs> go pick for another. It. No, no, I go for it. Go for it. Pick what you want. I've never read the second half of the series only because it didn't get the praise that the first half got, but it's. I think it's a worthwhile story for a comic book shelf, and I wish that Marvel had based the television show off of this run a lot more than what we were delivered. And that's Immortal Iron Fist from Ed Brubaker and David Aha and Matt Fraction. Was that the one you're thinking of? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Well, I have the, on my shelf behind me, we can do this now, right? I got the complete collection volume one. Oh, is that just the entire Fraction? That's This the... is just, the, yeah, the first half of it. I remember getting when I was starting to get more and more into Marvel, I had asked my comic shop owner what he would recommend as a jumping on book. Like, you know, if I like this, like, what, what should I try next? And so the two things he recommended were both the Hawkeye yeah. and the Immortal Iron Fist, which is the same creative team. Ed Brubaker, Matt Fraction, David Aha, Aja. I don't know. I'm I think it's laughing. apparently it's Aha. Aha. Yeah, I, I think so. I think. I don't but, know. Uh, I'm not going to pretend. What a, what a take that they, they gave to Iron Fist. It's the that best Iron Fist run. It's, it's such a great comic book story. Mm -hmm. And I was really excited for the television show, the prospect of seeing this story come to life in live action. Yeah. It would have, it for me, I thought, like, if they pull that off, it'll be the best thing that Marvel has made, live action. Yeah. Because it's, it's got so much appeal to different genres of fandom you know it's got the kung fu martial arts it's got you know for comic book fans the marvel universe it's got that uh what's it what's it called like the shangri-la that kind of uh, mystical side of things yeah yeah so that, that, it's kun, kun lun is it kun lun kun lun kun, yeah I, I don't I, know how you pronounce it but yeah take it take take it yes as good as mine yeah. right um some people say kun lun but anyhow that's the that's the place Same where what I you was, like in the it, privacy of your own home, right? Right. <laughs> so I don't. It's like Kun Lun, like the Nanda Parbat. Like Marvel has Nanda Par. Uh, DC yeah. has Nanda. That is Kun Lun. That to a degree, I think. Does Nanda Parbat blink in and out of existence and stuff? I don't think so. Oh, I think it's, it's just a secret place that only a few people know where to find it. What's weird? What's weird with with the Kun Lun thing is apparently it only lines up with the earthly plane once. Like every thousand years, and yet they've gone back and forth loads of times. So I don't. I don't is know. it every thousand years? I, I don't it know. Was like... It's like maybe a hundred it... or something. It's 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 infrequent. Um, yeah. there's not a regular bus service or anything. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's it's weird. They say it's like really limited, and then it's like, oh, I'm just going to nip over. Do you want to want to come with? Well, I don't feel like it this week, Kev. I think I'll go. I'll go to Cumberland <laughs> next week. That's all right. I was going to go down. Uh, you know, down to Boozer for the afternoon. I just want a couple of drinks. <laughs> yeah. It's weird, yeah. but in this one, like <laughs> they play with the whole mythos really nicely, and they add a whole level to it, don't they? Because they add in the immortal weapons, combat, and it, tournament. There's the just so thing. much. Yeah, like oh, and it's, Randall, it's, awesome Randall. That's that's the thing. Like, there's the legacy of Iron Fist that you never knew existed, and yeah. there's a whole element of that yeah. added to it, kind of like Detective Noir and. Uh -huh. You know that that's that Ed Brubaker feel that he brings to it. There's that yeah. mystery and that's true. Added to the, but man, if you've watched the Iron Fist television show, <laughs> pretend you, you thought haven't. it, was, and you and you didn't think it was that great, don't avoid reading this book. I've actually said to people, you need to read this. I think when they released the that book that you have, I told someone, you need to get this seriously. It's coming out pre-order it it'd be cheaper if you do that and they were just going no i watched the tv show i'm not i'm not watching it it's like it's not the same like it's not the same please 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 get it and they were going no no that was crap telly it's not the same no it's not the same. this is the problem with the with the shows the tv shows and the films especially if they don't work is that they i mean even when they do they're generally not the same you know no no i uh, like have you i was thinking about this today have you, can you think of, maybe I should say, say this for a speakeasy topic, but whatever. Can you think of a comic book movie that's better than the comics? Or TV show, just the film. Whatever. The, boy, the Boys movie. is better than the... Okay. That's what I've heard as well. 
And maybe I would say uh, I, I the original cool. Superman movie with Christopher Reeves was a better depiction of Superman in, in totality but than at the, the time. At yeah, the time. that could be a fair shout. I've not read but many from me neither. From then. But with the ones I have, I'm just like, I appreciate what Donner tried to do to give it like some grounding. Yeah. But I haven't, other than that, even the movies that I love, like, Civil War, uh, Winter Soldier. Yeah. Uh, I love those movies, but it's only because the comic's so good. <laughs> it right? does help. It's almost like you kind of give them praise for the fact that they drew the right bits from the comics to yeah. make the film work. Yes. You know? yeah. It's more yes. that, weirdly. Um, if if we didn't know about those, like, uh, the th- uh, in fairness, if, if I wasn't reading, if I hadn't read loads of Marvel stuff from that period, generally wasn't really marvel i probably wouldn't like those films at, at all really i don't like action films or blockbusters that's you know? interesting so i watched them no, i know that a... about you but i always find it like it's so interesting <laughs> it's yeah i just it doesn't work for me i don't get it i've never really liked action films there were exceptions right you know of course Die hard that's it <laughs> yeah 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 yippee yeah <laughs> Exactly, but yeah. I mean, there are there are always exceptions, but uh, generally, I'm not that bothered. But, but I think I'm sure there've been a few others. But I think some of the other um, adaptations probably aren't the kind of superhero-y stuff. Mm. I know yeah. there's another one that isn't a superhero series that I thought was better than the the comic, but now I just can't remember what it was. Mm. But there aren't many. Was it a like a drama? Better. What's that? There was a. I'm going. I'm drawing a blank, but I want to. Rec- I want to say a, a movie, and I, it's not coming to me. But I can see the movie poster or the the comic book it was based on. Act it out. No, we I don't see, think we I can see you it. now. I don't think. I don't think I've read or watched it. I just know that it's. Oh, you know that's actually a comic book movie. That sort of. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. I just can't think what it that's, is. Yeah, not Scott Pilgrim. I haven't read Scott Pilgrim, but I think I like the film sort of. If you like the film, you'll definitely like the book. It's a good, good series, fun series. Try it one day. I yeah, feel like I should. Yeah. yeah, it's worth it's worth a go. Mm. It's worth a, a read through one time. Okay, uh, yeah, I highly recommend to anybody who just wants to read a fun story. Not even like I got to get into Marvel and superheroes. I just think this Iron Fist story is just solid. It's just a fun read. What's good about it as well is that you don't have to know the history. Just pick up, pick yeah. up the story. You'll get a complete story. The additional bit with this as well. I don't know if the, if the the latter issues are any good. I dropped the series after that um, when it was coming out. But they they've also got like Immortal Weapons as a mini series in there as well, which I'm quite intrigued to read. But I didn't. I think I owned one or two of the issues back in the day. Um, so you're they've re really they've released this before, but only as the Fraction and Brubaker run. This yeah, is everything. Before. I would consider it. I would consider it. If, yeah, if you don't own it, well, I mean, the thing is, you kind of do it. You've got the best of it. I, there might I be the some good stuff it. in it. I don't know enough to be able to recommend just for the complete half. the completeness of a story. But I, at the same time, you could just get the other half of. I'm sure I could find that, which is probably smarter. I bet but it's going for a lot of money because I bet that's a tricky volume to get hold of, especially if they got an omnibus out instead. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, fun read. Highly recommended. Um, very very cool book. Cool. Pick the one that you thought I was going to say. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to see if you still if you do that because I'm then I, I can then I can look smug. Um, <laughs> so I will. I'll, I'm going to go with um, Doom Patrol by Gerard Way and Nick oh, I was going to pick. Were you going to pick it instead of instead <laughs> of the first two? I did. Sweet I revenge. Two. Yeah, but I knew I knew that was on your list because you've read yeah. it and you have praised it before. The only bit I haven't read is the end mini series. Um, okay. So I think they they announced that they were going to do this book around the time that they were releasing the the final series. So it's it's basically it was like a twelve issue series. Then they did Milk Wars, which isn't that great. Um and then they did this kind of comeback mini series to wrap it up. So it's the whole lot of that in one book. Milk Wars was a bit of a weird um Doom Patrol in theory it was like Doom Patrol Justice League story, but it was all the other young animal titles that uh Jared Way of um My Chemical Romance fame was yeah writing or involved with at the time so he did an imprint with dc it was about four or five titles i think mother panic was really good um cave carson has a cybernetic eye 
which probably had a better title than it was a story, but I still quite liked it. <laughs> Didn't get on with um, uh, Shade the Changing Girl, but apparently it gets better towards the end. Um, there were a few others, Bug and things like that, but there, and Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol was just so good. It's so good. And I don't know how it can... If people watching the TV series and going, you know, what can I read? Um, obviously, you can read the Grant Morrison stuff or the, the Rachel uh, Pollock omnibus or whatever. But this... I mean, the, the thing about Grant Morrison, I love Grant Morrison, but sometimes his stuff's not overly accessible. This is weird and accessible. And it's funny and it's entertaining. I've never read Doom, Doom Patrol, but I've pre-ordered this book off of the strength of your reviews. Oh, wow. And I've, heard, I've heard good things about it in other places, but I saw that you had were putting it high on the, the shelf as far as the ranking goes. Yeah. And I said, okay, you know what? If And this is complete. That's the other good thing about this, is that you get a, a full story for a I good do. price. Yeah. Uh, it is the, the gem of that. I mean, the thing is, Jared Way... I know some people might boycott what he does if they don't like My Chemical Romance, but honestly, that's stupid. Um, just pretend he's Billy Corgan with hair and get on with your life and pick up his stuff. It is so good. He, um, he's actually, <laughs> he did a story in um, Enter the Spider-Verse, the prequel mini to um, Spider-Verse, the Spider-Verse event, which introduced, if I remember rightly, it was like the spider with the slashes, the futuristic robot spider man with a girl that pilots it which ended up being in the, the the film the animated film i think i've got that right um and it was great and he's oh he did the umbrella academy you know that's right that's right so, yeah and he's done he's done plenty of stuff i think there was only one thing of his i've read that i didn't like which was the fabulous killjoys or the, the true lives of the fabulous killjoys or something i just didn't get on with it now, how similar is the Umbrella Academy to Doom Patrol as far as the way the team is structured and how they function as a team? And it's got that sort of Grant Morrison-esque element to it. And then the Doom Patrol, which he was also writing, I'm like, this is kind of like a Doom Patrol X-Men, which is what yeah. X-Men and Doom Patrol are kind of, they kind of like the same thing. Yeah. Not Do the same thing, but... Doom Patrol you know. are kind of the X-Men of the... Cause Grant Morrison said the same thing. Doom Patrol were, to him reading a lot of that stuff when it came out in the 60s, I think, or 70s, um, said they were very... X-Men and Doom Patrol were very similar. Umbrella Academy kind of is a bit of an odd combination of the two, where you can see the influences, at least. You know, right. there's enough influence in there to see a connection, but it made perfect sense that they'd let him then pick up Doom Patrol. He was clearly a fan, although, it, I mean, I don't know if he's read the 60s stuff or not. I haven't but you can tell that he's read the, the Grant Morrison run because um, okay. a lot of those characters come back. So is, do you, would you recommend to somebody like myself who I own the Doom Patrol from Grant Morrison, haven't read it yet. Yeah. Should I read that and then this or no. does it matter? No, it doesn't okay. matter. It doesn't matter. If you do, there's probably rewards in it for you. If you, know, if you do read the Grant Morrison one first, there'll be things that you'll recognize. Got it. But if you don't, Okay, because it has I'm to stand forward, alone. It's very accessible. I'm looking forward to to reading this because it'll be my first as well. Yeah, no, it's a good team. Very good the, team. The casting of it and everything is is seems right. So I want to give it a shot. And when you get the pre orders, knowing ahead of time what comes out, sometimes you save yourself a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a good way to do it. it. Yeah, yeah, this is this is great. It's well worth reading. It's just pure entertainment silliness. I like what it. Comics can be, should be about sometimes. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So I did Silver Surfer, Mortal Iron Fist. All right. This is a story I think that I like a little bit more than you. But whether you get it in a hardcover, in the omnibus, in the trades, whatever it is, it's coming back out in omnibus format. Um, Planet Hulk. I'm a big fan of the Planet Hulk story. Yeah? I do. I like it a lot. I know it's different. You're a big Hulk fan, Peter David. Like, you've got that classic sort of appreciation for the character. And this is this is basically Gladiator. Yes. If the Hulk was cast in Gladiator. Yeah. If he was... And it's, it was fun. It's Gamma Gladiator, basically. Yeah. It's pretty much... or And it kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, Superman Exiles. 
or Superman Exile and other stories, that omnibus where he goes to Battle World. Yeah. And has to fight Mongrel and it creates a whole, you know. It kind of reminded me of that a bit. It, I have to admit, it reminds me of a lot of stories where for some reason people go into another planet and they have a Roman arena. Right. Like, why is everyone on every planet got like like the Fantastic Four did it in the sixties? Yeah. They went to the Scroll World and there was a Roman arena. I think it was even a planet that was themed on gang on gangsters from Earth, but they had the Roman arena. They're like, let's just go to another planet. What have they got? What are the sites? Oh, we've got the uh the shops and we've got Roman Arena. Uh, we've got big space shuttles and Roman Arena. Like it's just a vision of the future. Roman Arena every time. So I think there was a bit of that that kind of put me off a bit, but it doesn't dwell on that that long, actually, does it? The arena. No, part. I mean, it's it's the action sequences a lot of for for a lot of the issues where it's like he's and and it's kind of in similar fashion to I guess the Iron Fist where the character is is going into combat of life or death, but not in like the supervillain format. It's like we're in an arena. You got to prove your worth. And you got to earn your right to stay alive or to keep the, you know, whether it's the, the Iron Fist power or in this case for the Incredible Hulk to stay alive. And, yeah. And he, like we said at the beginning, it's Gamma Gladiator. <laughs> yeah. That's really what it is. Basically. Um, but it, of course, it, the story doesn't end. It continues into World War Hulk and the ramifications of him being sent off to a planet, exiled finding his way there uh and then realizing or, or believe falling for a conspiracy that you know influences him to, to react spoilers uh, yeah spoilers <laughs> but you know it's comics right this is episodic this yeah is an episode yeah. form that, that is going to continue yeah so if you want to know where one one a stepping stone to get to world war hulk you want to read planet hulk that's the thing. It's it's a good it's a good jumping on point for the more modern era. Well, actually, we say modern. It was about two thousand and six when it started, which seems ages ago now, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, I know. Is that how long ago it was? Yeah, two thousand and six. But I still think of it as like the modern. Era. Yeah, it is. Yeah, two thousands is a modern era. It's yeah, true. it's fine. It, um, it is. Yeah, it's it's a good starting point because I think before then they either haven't collected it or some of it just wasn't great um and then before that there was the peter david run so right 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 <laughs> we know how you feel about that ah uh, yeah one day i'm yeah. gonna marry that series <laughs> um how do you feel about planet hawk i think we've talked about it before but i don't like it you don't like i yeah, don't I mind think... it i kind of it depends it's one of those things where i have to be in the right mood but it's it's yeah. so key to that period it and it is the jumping on point of that period because like you say it goes planet hulk world war hulk then you get into the Loeb mcginnis era which some people just cannot tolerate weirdly yeah, that's I the heard. bit i don't mind that's so funny yeah if you're i've heard people just say that they gave up reading like they threw the issue out yeah once they read i forgot it was issue 500 or something like that but it oh, just the 600 beneath or when something major happens, <laughs> yeah, something like that. So, yeah. it's yeah, I like I like seeing people's uh, reaction to like, no, I didn't mind it so much because of such and such, and other people are like, that was the worst thing ever. Those polarizing stories are are always interesting to me. Well, they are, and it's weird because I've literally just read them again because I'm going to do the, I'm going to cover that period for the Omnibus Comics Guides, um, right. because it introduces the Red Hulk, and obviously Red Hulk's going to be a bit of a key figure in the films, and even though I'm not necessarily that interested in that i've got a soft spot for this era i don't know why yeah. but so you work through that when red hulk comes in and then you get through things like fall of the hulks um and then world war hulks with the plural um and that refers back to planet hulk i think there's one more little storyline called dark sun and that essentially bookends that period it does carry on a bit after that but that kind of bookends that period in terms of all the Planet Hulk related stuff. I mean, like Scar hangs around for those who want to know. <laughs> but so, yeah, Incredible Hulks carries on for a little bit longer. But for the most part, Planet Hulk, World War Hulk, those other stories, and it ends in World War Hulks and Planet and Dark Sun. Jesus, that sounds more complicated than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> 
<laughs> just read Planet Hulk. Please read Planet Hulk, Hulk and I said go home. <laughs> just go home. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy that run. I think uh, I think it's 15, 16 issues. You get a really nice, well-rounded story. Some of the characters that you see in the um, Thor movies, the last two Thor movies, that's kind of where they come from. Yeah. Again, much better story in the comics than both Ragnarok and Love and Thunder. Yeah. Yeah. Much better. It's it's very it drew from that for one scene primarily and the place where it's set. Otherwise, nothing alike. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I was really hoping that we would get a little bit of the Planet Hulk story since they insinuated that's where they were going after the um Avengers Age of Ultron. Yeah. I thought they would do that a little bit more and, and they kind of used it for comedic effect, but whatever. Surprise. Yeah. Marvel Universe, what you going to do? Okay, Dave, take away the one you thought I was going to say. I'm going to say <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Verse. Yeah. Spider-Verse, Spider-Geddon, Omnibus. Um, if you don't have Spider-Verse, get it. Um, because it is that's such it's probably it's not my favorite spider-man like event i'm still um, here no worries dude Mind my crotch. are you are you trying to are you picking up the yeah see that's the one i've got so if you've got that as well don't worry just stick with that that's fine i i haven't heard great things about spider geddon which is a a sequel it seems that they've done quite a few spider-verse sequels since but I've, you don't hear anything about them just like oh they're doing a sequel is it any good <laughs> great it's sold <laughs> yeah i think this hardcover and i think they have a trade that collects everything that's in this hardcover they do the soft cover version of this you can get this complete story which spawns you know the miles morales movie and and some of the things that happened in the most recent one like this is the kind of not the it's not based off of this no. but it sets sort of a, a precedent for those to exist yeah pretty much um that's the thing, like with, with Spider Geddon, I can't even. T- I, I looked it up and did find out what the story was about. Um, and it was so memorable. I couldn't even tell you it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> like, oh, I, I think I ordered it. Skip that. Did I you? I did because it was super, super discounted from regular price. Oh. And I remember talking to uh, Adam Chapman, and he, and he said sometimes he gets something just so that even if he has it, he might just sell it to somebody for like five bucks more. And it's still a deal. Yeah. That's nice. But right. But they get it now instead yeah. of having to pay for a one sixty, they can have it for, you know, $85 or $90, which is still a, a, a really good deal. But someone was able to find, I'm like, you know what? That's not a bad idea. If it, maybe it's, it's, I want to have the spider get in, in one place and I can, give somebody my spider verse copy or vice versa i wasn't sure if i'm gonna if i'm gonna keep it i might cancel it i don't know because i don't i'm not really interested in spider get it no like, that's I, the thing at all neither am i um like if they were going to do one that also does all the others i still wouldn't spider spider verse is is a fantastic event like it's so much fun man you, you get even if you don't get every reference just seeing all these Spider-Men interact and it doesn't, and women and robots and whatever else, you know? Um, and even though it's like the tagline was every Spider-Man ever, they obviously, they must have missed a couple. You know, if you really dig into it, they've missed a few, but there are so, there are literally so many, like every alternate universe version, some you've never even heard of before or seen before because they didn't appear till this event. Um, Miles Morales is in there. Peter Parker is in there. Otto Octavius is in there. But it's the way that Dan Slott brings it together is really, really clever. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think sometimes Dan Slott can catch flack yeah. for certain things. And people call him like a hack writer or whatnot. But he wrote this story and tied it in in such a clever way with Superior Spider-Man where it's... Yeah. I'll always give I'll always give him his kudos for pulling that off. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a really amazing. big undertaking. Just and and like you said, I feel like regardless of how you feel about the totality of Dan Slott's run, it is very much a celebration of Spider Man like love. If you love yeah. Spider Man, there's something there for everybody. And 
it culminates with this where it's it's peter parker after superior spider-man coming back into the costume after being you know absent in some way for a while and you get every spider-man in from every form of multimedia as well yeah you do there's even and, references and- to toby mcguire and andrew garfield sneakily in there if you look carefully right yeah. yeah so like if you love spider-man at some point in your life if you grew up in any of the decades where spider-man existed i, I remember someone it was sam sam noir mentioning to me that uh it made a reference to a spider-man tv show that was from japan yes yeah and he goes i i thought i was the only one who knew or remembered or appreciated aspects of of that wacky show because it was very different from conventional spider-man but they refer to it here and it's useful like it's a useful reference hmm. like, that's cool yeah that's really cool. It actually it's a, a key role. Celebration. yeah it really yeah. is it's, it's great fun and that's the one of the other thing i will say about dan Slott. i know we've said it before but um when it comes to his run whether you like it or not i mean i, I for the most part i like it i haven't i stopped I like off I like at a certain it. point but it's it's good but when they have the event there's it feels the right time to have the event and it That's feels true. like there's a reason to have the event and there's payoff. So, That's and this true. is a good, big, shameless, grand scale Spider Man event. And you think, like, one web slinging dude shouldn't be enough to hold something of this scale. And it works. It really does work. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a good call. Uh, if you guys find that book for, again, decent price and you love Spider Man, it's a Spider Man celebration. Good that call. That is. Dude. Okay, where are we on our list? What do I have? I have picked three, your right? Number, I... You are your number four. Number four. Okay. Uh, man, I'm running out of picks. <laughs> yeah. Do you like select your five before you started, or are you just kind of seeing how you feel? I don't have a, I don't put them in an order. You don't? No, I just, it, and I go based on how we go back and forth. Okay. So pick something's like, okay, someone's got to fill the spot. Yeah. Um, I just erased one of my picks. It's an image comic. I'll go with the image comic. Uh, it's a complete collection. I haven't read it, but uh, it's coming out clearly in February. I think it's a good time for it to come out because it's, um, I guess the proper term would be Afrocentric. I'm referring to Bitter Root, oh. the, complete, the complete story of Bitter Root. And to give it proper, uh, con- um, what's the word? Context. Let me look up the synopsis of Bitterroot for people who haven't heard of this because it isn't Marvel or DC. It's an image comic. 17 to 18 issues, 528 pages, 15 issues. And a special, I think. Yeah, that's right. Red Summer Special. Okay, so here's the the synopsis. For generations, the the Sangure family has fought to protect the world from an ev- the evil plague of hideous creatures born out of hate and racism. But now the family must face an even greater evil that has arisen to destroy humanity and threatens to rip the family apart. I know nothing about the series, All right. but I like the complete collection. I think the creative team is a pretty solid one. David Walker, I like some. I like other things he's worked on in the past. I give it a shot. Yeah. Sanford Green, I think, is the, his, his partner, his usual partner. Yeah, did they do an Iron, Power Man and Iron Fist series? Yeah, they did. They've done they've done a couple things not coming to mind right now. They've done a couple things together. But uh coming out in February, February twenty eighth is when it's gonna be released, I guess, to order online and have it delivered. So yeah, going in blind on it. That's good though. It's fine because when, when image don't often do that, they're very selective, it seems. I don't know if they yeah. choose or the creators decide to push when yeah. people become kind of a bigger name. But they don't do it that often. No, for their stuff. Not enough. not enough. No, not enough. I think you're right. I'd rather see ten of them, ten image deluxe editions, than ten Marvel Omnis at this point. Yeah, to to be quite honest, because, I mean, I don't even know. I won't be running to buy this book, but it is an option for for an image selection to have a complete story, which, you know, you could usually trust the image brand a lot of the time to give you something quality because yeah. the creators are doing a story that is true to them and and um sincere 
So I think sometimes with the big two, especially nowadays, the corporate structure of it, you don't feel that there's any sincerity left, even when they claim there is. You feel much more that it's the movie influencing the comic instead of the comic influencing the yeah, movie. Yeah, very much so. You said that last episode, and yeah. I think it's a good oh, point. Know. Maybe it was was it you? You said that, I right? No. Maybe it I was say that. a lot though, dude. Might have been Adam. <laughs> really. If it's you, I, Adam, oh, actually, I think Adam said something about the dog wagging the the tail yeah. wagging the dog. That's right. So I think That's it right. was Adam. So give him the credit where it's due. But yeah, whereas with Image, I don't. You know what? Have you ever felt that? This is a tangent, so I apologize. But do you ever feel that um, the image series are oftentimes like television pitches? Um, do you ever feel they get that feeling like they're writing this to get a TV show out of it? It felt like some of the Mark Miller stuff was. Definitely. Oh, for sure. But I've listened to an interview with Mark Miller talking about that. He did an interview with Charlie Brooker, who, who did um, Black Mirror, wrote Black Mirror. Um, okay. And he basically said, I have a deal with Netflix, so I, I don't need to do that. I don't need to do a comic first to make it a pitch. I mean, I'm working with Netflix. So right. it does feel that way, though. I did feel like like some of his stuff, I can't think of particular ones. I felt Huck was a bit like a pitch off the top of my head. I can't remember what else, but I did get that impression. Prodigy? Um, did you read Prodigy? I don't think I even bothered. I kind of don't pick up Mark Miller's stuff anymore. Oh, okay. I'm not like anti Crazy. him, but nothing's made me want to pick it up. I've I've found that I liked his stuff more than I thought I did, just for the quick in and out of the adventure that you get from yeah. his story. It, it's big, it's bombastic, it's fast yeah. paced, it's you know, like you said, it's an action movie. Yeah. And comic all the time. And sometimes it has a little bit of heart, right? Like Huck. Huck had a nice little bit of heart Surprise to it. It's like well, he catches you off guard when he does that because he is a bit yeah. like everything's like, ultra violent, like kick ass. And oh, kick ass was actually nah, kick ass. The film was better than the comic. Yeah. Okay. Got, you got it. it. Nice. Uh, I've ne- I've watched the movie. I never read the comic. Probably watched the movie again. It was funny. I wasn't that impressed with the comic. No, yeah. Not really? No. There was a little bit of time where I was on like a Mark Miller sort of. What's the word? Like just reading a couple of his series back to back, a little kick, and I was enjoying the the quick dopamine hits of his comics Uh because there are even like Reborn with him and Capullo. I don't know if you read that one. No, that was that was fun. I think I did think about getting it, and then just other things trumped it. Yeah, no, that was that was a fun book, and it was you can tell that um, Capullo was was drawing like what he wanted to like there was a lot of him involved in that that story right but it was a it, it, it was a nice story with a with a little bit of heart kind of like huck has not oh. in a not in the same way but it's there okay so, yeah i'll give that a go at some point we could yeah, do little I, little hidden gems on it there you go there yeah. you, that's a good call so yeah i don't know like going back rewinding a bit that i don't know what's influencing what anymore but still with image you're at least getting writers writing the story that they want and there's a sincerity to it and it doesn't yeah. feel quite as forced as what you get from the corporations now yeah yeah i think there's a fair amount of truth in that um but it's it's good i think that it is often a sign of quality if they're when image collects something like this i've, I've read a few issues of bits of root just as a, a taster and it is just it's quite an interesting little oddball story so far so oh yeah i'm gonna consider it yeah, I give it a go. Yeah, Dave, Good show, take it away. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit left, but mainstream. Ooh, what's that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Huh? Are you? Can you <laughs> guess what it's gonna be? No. Dark horse. Mm? Oh, it's <laughs> IDW. It was Dark Horse, but now okay. it's Marvel. Ah, Star Wars. No. But, aliens. Yeah, aliens. So I don't know why I'm suddenly quite fascinated with the whole aliens thing. I like the idea of the expanded mythos stuff that Dark Horse did. Um, but I've only read chunks of, of that. So because it went on for like 20 years. Did they have aliens for 20 years? 25 years? Something like that? Dark Horse? I'm not sure. I've never read an alien comic in my life. 
I've read something because there's Mike Mignola stuff and everything in there. Like they, they've got some really good creators in there. There's a real interesting mix of people that have picked up the Aliens series. They tended to do it as a series of mini series. Um, but they, um, they're wrapping up the Omnibus collection soon. Um, but this is, and it's very rare for me to recommend an epic collection. And again, it's one that I haven't actually read yet. Um, but I'm kind of fascinated with it. So it's Aliens, the original year's epic collection. So it's Marvel collecting Dark Horse alien comics. They don't mention Dark Horse on the cover because they're rude like that. <laughs> um, how dare they? <laughs> but yeah, it's it's the it's basically the beginning of Dark Horse's alien stuff. So some of it's a little sketchier. I think it's like late 80s, early 90s kind of period. Um but it, like I say, it goes on for like twenty years, and some of, some of the stories that have come out in that time were acclaimed aliens runs, you know. So, but I, I think it's this is all like pre. Um, what was the terrible film with the the giant bald guy? He was blue or something, and was it Prometheus? I think it was think Prometheus. So. Yeah, it was before that. So I think it kind of creates its own mythos. In, in many ways, it's kind of I guess like the way Dark Horse did Star Wars um, Mm -hmm. before the newer films. So it kind of, when the newer films came out, it kind of upset all the mythos they created in the comics. But go with the comics. Um, Yeah. (laughs) So this is the, this is Aliens. It's, uh, it's an epic. So it's probably about, I think it's about 500 pages. So it'll be the first half. It'll probably be volume one of eight, I think. By my calculations. Would you collect those epics? Um, I've got the Omni so I don't, <laughs> I don't oh, need okay. to. Got you. But um, yeah, I just haven't managed to dive into them yet. But yeah, I don't know. I like the whole aliens thing. It's horrifying. Um, and I'm a big fan of aliens. The second one. The second one, yeah. Um, I love that film. It's it's what again one of those action sci fi blockbuster films that I like. But it's just this classic man. Kick ass lead female. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And Bill Paxton. Yeah, he wins every time. Yeah. Not well, you know, <laughs> he wins every time. I don't mean in the story. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, not spoilers. So yeah, it's it's great. I I I'm fascinated with with the whole alien thing. So I'm recommending it to say that this is coming out if you missed the omnis or you prefer the paperbacks on your shelf. Um Aliens the original years. Epic Collection Volume 1 is coming very soon. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Good pick. Thank Never you. read anything Aliens, but I like the... Uh, you have to give Dark Horse that little sneak in, right? Your number one's probably Dark Horse for sure. No! Okay. Maybe. Or maybe. Okay, my last pick. Uh, I haven't read this. It is a Volume 3, which is unlike me to to usually recommend Hmm. but i've got the first volume and i've read very very little of this series but if you've listened to this podcast at all in the last couple years you know that i tend to mention this writer way too often maybe once an episode and i don't mean to i really don't (laughs) astro city oh no i thought it was gonna be something by peter tomasi (laughs) no astro city uh volume three from Kurt Busiek, who we often talk about um, his Avengers and all the Marvel stuff, the Thunderbolts that he did. But for many people, this is uh, their preference of his work. Yeah, it's highly because it's more acclaimed. It's highly acclaimed stuff. I've only read like the first six issues of that original right. series. And now they're doing these, these uh, nice collections of... I don't know if they're considered compendiums or what are they called? There's a name to them. I mean, I should uh, look uh, it up Astro before. City Metro Book. That's it, Metro Book. Yeah, exactly. it's about 500 pages, so they're quite they're hefty enough. Yeah, I think like yeah, when no, it, we see so many compendiums, they seem relatively thin now. Whereas yeah, 500 was a lot at one point. I'm not sure how many volumes they'll collect of the Astro City because I, I don't know four. how much. Is that how much they they've released over the last couple of years? Like two omnibus worthy? Uh, I don't know. My my understanding is it will be four volumes, but I I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, but because volume four is out later in the year, as well. Yeah. And I I don't know enough about it to be able to recommend it, but it's something that I'm 
desperately wanting to read when the set is complete. Yeah, yeah. So two volumes have been released so far. The third coming out in February. Yeah. I still have to get the second, but I do right. plan to have this this whole series. I don't want to wait too long where it's like unavailable and when they yeah. re-release it, they have a completely different trade dress and it's going to collect different issues. And so um, it's for those hearing what we're talking about, Astro City, what's Astro City? Astro City. Astro City. Astro City, yeah. Astro City. <laughs> Size, um, I, like to lay I guess it's the best way to put it is his sort of like pastiche of traditional superheroes where characters will remind you or be like the analogs yeah. of what you, you know, your Superman, your Batman, your Wonder Woman, but have their own real world feel and different rules and sort of universe that they live in. Yeah. And you don't know anything about the other characters in order to read this. You can just jump in and read it from the very beginning but this is a volume three there's other stuff to read ahead of it but this will definitely be on my list in theory it's a good time actually it's a good time to shout this book if anyone's missed it because yeah this is around about the time that volume two of these kind of books sells out so if you're considering it i'm gonna do the 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 thing that i've always heard other people do on the show i might buy it while we because <laughs> that that fear of not being able to find it again is really annoying volume and two is always buying... the killer as well volume two or oh, three wait. is always like normally volume two because that's when there's a um reduction in the uh numbers they publish basically right right and i don't even see it right now i went to buy it and volume four came up ahead of it so anyways well i actually spend money while we record let's let's watch you look this up and yeah <laughs> That's really exciting. Oh, isn't price it? comparison yeah. sites. Yeah. Volume two is still there. Oh, you can get it. That was a close one, man. Have you gotten it? Yeah, oh, I've got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to chance it because I knew it would, it goes, it disappears. And, and this, that format they've released it in is nice. It's a shame it's it not, is. you know, deluxe, but whatever. Fine. I'll take okay. it. Alex yeah. Ross covers as well throughout. That's right. That That's true. Important to know for people who, don't know what that means when we say Alex Ross, one of the most classic comic book artists as far as painted. Yes. Real, sort of like, uh, what is it? Like, like photorealistic? Real, photorealistic paintings of what superheroes would maybe look like in yeah. real life. So he did Marvel. He bases it on people. On with, the, yeah, Busek, Mar- with Busek as well, didn't he? And, oh, shit, caught my arm on the cable, sorry. Um, he, um, yeah, he did Marvel's and Kingdom Come. They're yeah. the two yeah. biggest projects. I think like Kingdom Come probably gets him the most cash, apparently, still to this day. Um, he's done plenty of other stuff besides, but they're they're the two that he's best known for. Yeah. Astro City Volume 3. Weird last pick for me, but that's what I'm going with. It's going to make it to the shelf. It's I didn't see home. that one coming. Um, so that's a good shout, man. I like I like being caught off guard. I got in two image ones. All right. You I didn't just do Marvel. <laughs> nice you big sellout so um <laughs> yeah uh, my last one is from uh marvel comic this is not it's from dark horse uh, uh i knew it um it's called the lonesome hunters um it's by tyler crook he did the artwork for um oh i uh oh god i'm having a blank it was with cullen bunn I'm having a total blank. It was it was another Dark Horse series. I didn't actually like that series because I'm not a big fan of Cullen Bunn's writing. Um, what's it called? Oh, that's gonna really irritate me now. Um, but basically, I love the artwork in the, in the series that I cannot remember the name of. But I wasn't a fan of the writing. Whereas with this one, he um, Tyler Crook has written it and illustrated it, and it is not only beautiful to look at; it's just I can't, it's one of those things like when you read it, it's really oddly, there's something in there you can't explain why it's so good. It just feels good. It feels nice, even though it's like quite a dark story. Um, it's like an odd pairing of, of an old guy who's clearly had a strange mystic past, um, but he just seems like a sweet old man who wants to keep himself to himself. I like Mr. Magoo but not as mm. cheerful and he can see. Um, and a teenage girl 
um, who ends up being drawn into some of this stuff. And it sounds like, oh, it's a web of intrigue. It isn't. It just, it's oddly paced. It's sort of strangely twisted in a, in a bit. You know, you wouldn't want your kids to read it. But um, it's the thing, I think as well, I thought this was self-contained. I don't think it's labeled as volume one, but it's the beginning of a of a greatest story. And I would recommend getting in now, picking it up, giving it a go. It's it sucks you in. So it's it's the Lonesome Hunters. These two very disparate characters end up being drawn into this strange mystical storyline. I don't want to say too much because actually the, the beats of the story are quite sparse. Um, it's just a fun ride. Um, and it's a beautiful book to look at. But it's it's a opening to a bigger eventual story. Yeah, because the thing is, it's on Dark Horse Digital. I didn't think I was going to get the book because it's on Dark Horse Digital for about like, well, in England, it's 89p, I think, for an issue. So it's pretty cheap on, on digital at the minute. But I read it in one go. Like, I just wanted to know what happened next. And then it got to the end and I thought like, oh, this carries on. And there's a part of me going, I thought I was getting yourself contained. And there's the other part of me going, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. want more. You know, right. so I was really, really happy with it. So I, I highly, highly recommend this book. It's probably, um, I don't want to compare it to how good it is compared to others because I, I don't know about aliens, but there's some great stuff. I'm, I'm happy with the stuff that I've put forward. I don't want to say it's better or worse than anything, and it's not. It's just, but it's a great indie series. It's different, um, and it's kind of oddly, darkly feel good. What's it called again? And who's the? So creative it's called team? the Lonesome Hunters. By Tyler Crook. I keep saying it's by Tyler Crook, but I, normally I have all the pages open with the, like who's created it, how many page number, how many pages there are in it, um, and I haven't because I'm clearly a moron today. <laughs> um, so I'm doing it now, super sneaky. Look how professional I am. Yeah, nice. it's it is Tyler Crook. Yeah, and I'm gonna have a sneaky look at that other series he did because it is really really annoying me. Um, it was the name of like a little town or something. I mean, he's done stuff for people. Oh, it's Harrow County. I was going to say that, and I haven't even read Harrow County, but I know you recommended it somewhere oh, recently. I, I read it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Oh, you read recommend? Okay. The art is thought... brilliant. The okay. art is, is fantastic. I'm not, I don't, I think I've, there's only one Cullen Bunn series I've gotten on with, and that was Sinestro. Mm. I'm just not into his stuff. Yeah, I haven't. I can't think of much of his stuff that I know off the top of my head that I could say like, "Oh yeah, he wrote this or he wrote that." I know he's wrote a ton of things. There's loads. There's yeah. I just I'm not very familiar with his things. So. No, I'm not. I, I, I like character driven stuff, and I think the character bit is more often than not the part that doesn't work for me. Whereas actually on Sinestro, he did the he concentrated on the relationship between Sinestro and um, so what was she called? Sinestro's daughter. I can never get her name oh, right, and I love yeah, that character. Yeah, yeah I, I know who you, I know exactly the character you're talking Yorinic, about. Yorinic, uh, ah, no, it's gone. Can't do it. Ah, <laughs> we got Soranic Natu. Soranic Natu. Natu. Sounds right. Sounds right. Let's Something like that, wouldn't it? Let's see if you're right. What is Sinestro's daughter's name? Let's see if Dave is right. Sinestro. I probably pronounced it wrong. Daughter. At least I'm not yeah. going to offend her. <laughs> Sorry, Nick Nate, you got it right. Huh. Oh. Good job. Thank you. Shocker. You remember the last name as well. <sighs> Maybe you didn't pronounce it right. It's probably uh, last name's probably supposed bad. to be Sinestro, though, to be fair. <laughs> so <laughs> right? I technically got it wrong, right? <laughs> well, good picks. It was a little bit slimmer pickings this much a month, or maybe it was just things I wasn't willing to recommend. I yeah, looked through a list selective. again. And I'm like, there's some stuff I do want to recommend just because it's coming out. Do you want me to do a quick run through of some of the other possible yeah. highlights without detail? Go ahead. Um, so Aftershock, um, I've got a couple of books out. Astronaut Down, which I know nothing about, but the cover looks really nice. So, you know, make it a go. They've also, they're also also releasing Baby Teeth as an omnibus, which is the Donny Cates um, yeah. series. It's it's not bad. It's It starts off really, really well. For me, I found it started off really, really well. It ended kind of okay. Um, okay. But it's Donny Cates now. A lot of people love Donny Cates, so 
that's coming. It's not a Marvel thing from him. It's Aftershock. Dark Horse, um, I've got volume two of Count Crowley coming out. Again, I haven't read that one, but I'm hearing really, really good things about it. It's a kind of a gothy monster hunter story, and it's written by, I'm not going to get his name right, but the guy who plays the polka dot man in the Suicide Squad film. Uh, he wrote it? Yeah, apparently so, yeah. David, David Dast- Mal- uh, yeah, um... Das Malchin? Is that? He, I, can't, I wasn't yeah, going to try. Yeah, he was also uh, uh, in Dark Knight. He plays the, the the guy who's dressed up as the cop. Yeah, I think there's something that, else in it. Or, Wasn't he an Ant Man? Yeah, he's an Ant Man as well. More famously, an Ant Man. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's he wrote it, so it's his second series of this character. It's almost it's, like he only is in comic book movies for some reason. He's clearly a big old comics fan. That guy. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, oh, and Mind Management Bootleg by um, Matt Kent. I'm a big fan of Matt Kent. I've never read Mind Management, so it's a difficult recommendation. Um, DC, the only ones I could spot that looked vaguely interesting were... One second, Dave. My dog is literally trying to eat one of my omnibuses. No! Hey, what do you think you're doing? That's a trip to the vet. Yeah. And she's try- I think she's trying to get my attention, and it wasn't working before. And so she's now, now she's just like, you know what? This gets your attention. <laughs> You have yeah. to not react. Just just stand there crying. <laughs> yeah, like, what the hell are you doing? Right in front of me. Like, the nerve. What was it? What book was it? I think it was... Well, she was going for either Batwoman or Lock and Key. I just saw her mouthing and, like, she's like, how can I, how can I grab this? Is there a way for me to... Jeez. She's eaten some omnibus before. Oh, yeah. She on... had Divinity, didn't she? She did Divin- Divinity and Bloodshot and... Uh... Uh, we don't. We don't gotta try to ruin this. No, let's not. Moment. Let's not live through the pain again. I wonder if she no. would have had like a trippy moment um, <laughs> after eating lock and key. Like she'll get expelled into another dimension or something. Right. That's what she would deserve if she did that. <laughs> Want to call her what she is, but it would be rude. <laughs> <laughs> but fair. Uh, yes. Um, so DC, you've got um, Aquaman and the Flash Void Song, which is uh, Ron V story i think with christian ward no is it no i don't remember i think it is i think that's i'm, I'm not 100 percent. it looks interesting batman beyond neo year i've got a bit of a soft spot for batman beyond again for some reason even though i've never actually watched the animated series uh batman the imposter i wrote down but i don't remember anything about it <laughs> um and there's a birds of prey volume coming out which kind of finishes off the volume one run um but i guess simone i don't think it's by gail simone but it's by ted mckeever or something no Chuck Dixon? No, I can't remember the guy's name. Okay. It's going to come to me somewhere, probably while I'm asleep. Um, IDW have got The Kill Lock, The Artisan Wraith coming out, um, which is a sequel to The Kill Lock, which was by one of the artists who did a lot of the darker, more twisted story. Again, I normally have all these notes up, and I've failed dismally. <laughs> um, but The Kill Lock is really, really good fun. But it's basically three robots traveling through space to get to wherever there is they're heading. I don't want to spoil it. And they're just sort of bickering and being dicks to each other. So this is volume two of that. Um, image Sean of... Hey, Sean McKeever. Yes. Well done. Thank you. Well done, the internet. God, you're taking <laughs> the internet's credit. How rude. Um, image have got um, Swing coming out for you grown-ups who um, want to see a story about a, a couple who are swinging. I think that the, it's written by, it's, it's like an autobiographical story, essentially. Um, it's about a couple who are swingers and their experiences, and it's not necessarily like that thing you see in all drama things of like how it all goes horrifically wrong. It's actually like they found it's been a really positive thing for their life. So... It's a autobiographical, autobiographical account of that, or semi-autobiographical. Shouldn't say semi when referring to that, but I did. <laughs> um, there's also Scurry, which uh, again I know very little about, but it's it's got a really nice cover to it, and it's two mice being chased by a cat. Looks like the mice are the lead characters. It's it's, it's three hundred and something pages, so it's a nice page count on it for a, a decent uh, price. Yeah. Um, but it looks really nice, so I'm going to try that out. Lastly, some company called Marvel something um they're releasing defenders beyond which i do kind of want to read because it's got the beyonder in it and i'm an 80s sucker um guardians of the galaxy by brian michael bendis omnibus um i i remember reading that but i wasn't a huge fan of that run but i think it was around a good price 
Um, yeah. Marvel's Snapshots, which I think had Alex Ross's involvement in it to some degree. There was yeah. Apparently, um, the Namor story in that is meant to be really, really good. But I don't know a huge amount about it. It's fairly recent. And Hulk Grand Design, um, which is the equivalent of the Ed Pisco X-Men books. But by whom? Uh, I didn't bring my notes. Um, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> Jeffs. Is that who's doing this? No, one? no, oh, I, oh, oh, so. I didn't have my notes. I've only got the basic notes on me. So um, but yeah, it's Jim Rugg, I think it is, or something like. Um, I should know. I'm really apologizing. Jim Rugg, you Jim got Rugg, it. yeah. Thank you. Um, but they're really popular. They basically look back at the characters histories in quite a tongue-in-cheek and sort of um you know that with with that uh what you call the treasury edition style print so they're a bit bigger it's got that kind of harsher 70s paper and it's it's really nicely produced stuff um they've really thought about the production so yeah they're the final recommendations um out nice nice i don't have any uh anything for more like uh, as far as alternative picks and whatnot but i always count on you oh. you are the man <laughs> shucks thank you dave how, thank did, you, how did you sir. find first going live um semi forgot about it stop saying semi god's sake um <laughs> i kind of forgot about it after a bit so yeah it's all right i don't know who it's knows we'll probably have loads of comments no we won't we won't have any comments but the ones we do have will be who are these dicks that think they can just wander in here that's who they are, the Talking semi-dicks. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for listening. If you're just listening on the uh, podcast apps, whether you're riding the bus, taking the train, in your car, thank you for for us to keeping company with each other. I don't know what the proper term would be, but thank you for letting us keep you company in whatever way you're commuting. But if you're at home watching us, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Hi. Nice to meet you. There you go. Uh, Dave? Always a pleasure. Likewise, sir. Anything to plug that we need to let the people know where to, to follow? You want to see more stuff from us, um, head over to the Omniverse Comics Guide. It's omniversecomics.guide website. That's the primary place. Um, we are popping up on other social media channels. You can find them there. Some of those channels suck. So we may be doing less or more on some than others. I think we're going to kind of reassess what we do at the minute. Um, but we've got a presence on Instagram and Facebook and the usual kind of places that you'd expect to see this sort of shit. And let them know where to follow your, your review page. Cause I, I love that page. Funnily enough, the review page, I think um, we're going to start just doing on the website. Um, so okay. yeah, why should Instagram get all the, the pleasure of my insightful <laughs> reviews where I use the word fun too much. <laughs> <laughs> it was Fair fun. Enough. I liked it. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see what the point of this story is. One star. (laughs) (laughs) Someone should be punished for this. Probably Alan Moore. One star. (laughs) What's it called again? Witch men. (laughs) Well, thank you everybody for listening. Rate and review the show uh, on your different podcast apps, Spotify, iTunes, whatever it is you prefer to listen to it on. And be sure to visit omniversecomics.guide. Stay tuned for more episodes. More uh, more content coming your way. Thank you, everybody. Night-night. <laughs>